Today, we're going to talk about constant acceleration, one-dimensional motion with the uh, Pasco Wireless Smart Cart. Uh, first thing you'll need, obviously, is the Pasco Smart Cart. Red or blue, doesn't matter. And then on the end, you'll have to have attached the magnetic bumper. Um, we have a 1.2 meter aluminum meter track, and at each end, we have an end stop and a pair of feet. Uh, the feet over here are protruding more than the opposite side. Uh, so we have a, a decline from this end to here. And uh, we're going to take a look at some kinematic equations. So first, let's start by opening uh, capstone here. All right. And we're going to select sensor data. And we're going to press the power button right here on the smart cart. The uh, Bluetooth LED indicator will start blinking red, which means that we are broadcasting a signal. And it has appeared on my software here. So we will click that. It's important you orient the cart so that the arrow positive X direction is pointing down the decline. Looks like we are connected, beautiful. Um, just double check the position sensor settings. We wanna make sure it zeros after each run. So if you do multiple runs, it's gonna zero each time. We will close that. And uh, when you first open this up and connect the smart cart, you'll see it already populates a graph with position against time. Uh, first thing we're gonna do here is set some recording conditions. Um, going to do a measurement based start condition using the position sensor to start recording at uh, let's see, 0 0.05, 005, so five millimeters. Now we're going to set a stop condition, measurement based, position, and 0.9 meters. So pretty much all the way down the track almost. All right, with that, we can um, start collecting some data. So we'll go ahead and set up the smart cart. Just hold it in place against the end stop. Hit record and release. All right. Now that it's stopped automatically, we can do some analysis here. Um, at first glance, we can see that this uh, curve here is very parabolic. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and apply a curve fit. I'm um, going to do user defined. So this one actually already found uh, that it is um, parabolic. Typically, when you first open this up, it will default to uh, linear. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, record all these values for the initial position, velocity, and acceleration. I'm going to write these down here real quick. Let's see, uh, X is 0 0.02940, oh, so it's about three millimeters, which is very close to the um, starting point of our smart cart. So that is in line. We have initial velocity of, let's see, 0 0.0437 meters per second and acceleration of 0.0819 meters per second squared. All right. So now we want to take a look at velocity versus time. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do here is add another plot right below this one. And we are going to select velocity on the same axis here. And it should automatically populate it. Um, and so now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to apply another linear curve fit to this curve right here. We need to make sure we change the uh, settings for that one. So right now it is defaulted to uh, the parabolic that we just used. So now we're gonna put in the general form for velocity, which is equal to V naught plus acceleration times T and apply. 
and we're going to record these two initial values for velocity and acceleration. So for velocity, we have 0 0.0454, which is very much in line uh, with what we got from the position graph, and 0 0.0825 for acceleration. All right. And so we can see that the slope of the um, of the line here of the velocity um, is going to be equal to uh, the initial velocity of the position curve. Uh, so next, let's compare the acceleration against time. I'm going to add one more plot. This time we will do acceleration. And we will do a linear fit on this as well. Rather, let's do an average instead. So if we take the average of all these points here, and let's, there we go, open up the statistics, and we will get a, oops, mean, there we go. And if we, uh, Get rid of the position graph here. Oops, I got rid of it. There we go. We have an average of 0 0.084, which once again lies very close to the acceleration values that we confirmed from prior steps. So with that, we can see that kinematics clearly does work. Um, we, we see the relationship between the acceleration, velocity, and position as rates of change of the other. And um, there's many different variations you can do with this experiment, uh, ways to analyze the data. Um, this is just probably the most efficient way using the tools that are built in here. And I hope you found this useful.